Memory is contained in the unconscious. Memory is stored in the unconscious. The conscious mind by itself, uh, alone by itself, it has no memory, it has no emotion, it has no, it's completely dispassionate. It's, um, it's verbal, it has free will, it has the ability to make choices, but it does not contain memory. All the ancient religions specified this. They said that one half of the, one half of the, the soul, it had free will, it had intellect, it had um, the spark of life, you know, it never died. The other half, the soul, it had memory, it had emotion. What they would do is try to help a person to identify with one half of the mind and disidentify it with the other half, and that way the division would not bother them as much. Now, some of the Eastern religions, like um, Hinduism and Buddhism, they seem to have identified with the conscious mind, with the conscious half of the mind, um, whereas other religions like um, Christianity and um, Judaism, they seem, seem to have identified with the, Un with the unconscious. They said that, you know, the most important part of yourself is your own, your own innermost soul and soul and your, your feelings and your emotions. And whereas the, um, the Eastern religion said um, the most important part of yourself is the, the dispassionate, unfeeling, abstract part of yourself. And I believe that they did this because they basically gave up hope on preventing from the division from occurring and said, well, this is the next best thing. As we go through our lives, our unconscious is constantly whispering to us, telling us, uh, oh, you should have done this. You should have been like that. You should do this. You should do that. That's true. It's, it's basically our, our moral voice is uh, originates from our unconscious. Right. Or now, we have a choice. We have a choice. We can listen to this or we can ignore it and reject it. And, and very often we do, you know, because the conscious mind is the stronger of the two halves of the mind. It can push the unconscious away, it can repress it, it can ignore it, it can hard the head. It has free will, right? Right, right. Okay. So. And so if one half of your mind is rejecting the other half of your mind while you're alive, then when you die, it does not surprise me if those two halves of the mind completely divide apart from each other. If on the other hand, over the course of your life, oh. you listen to your, to your moral voice of your unconscious, you embraced it, you recognized it, you tried to um, integrate its messages huh? into the way you live your life, then you would not divide yourself in two in life, and then you would not divide apart when you die. This was a, a passage, this was a book that was discovered in uh, among the Nag Hammadi scriptures in 1945, mm -hmm. and the passage you're talking about, um, Mary asked Jesus, she says, okay, I just saw a vision, Lord, she says, and when I saw the vision, did I see that vision with my soul or with my spirit? Mm. And he said, no, you did not see that vision with your soul or with your spirit. You saw that vision with the new, N-O-U-S, that exists between the soul and the spirit. And that's a very, very um, important um, passage in that book because that shows that uh, uh, when that book was written, that not only did it believe in the binary soul doctrine, it believed that you have two parts, right. but it also believed that there was a unity that was believed to exist between the two parts that there was a wholeness, there was a completion, there was a, mm -hmm. there was a actual self that existed. And there was that self, there was that mind. New means mind in Greek. Um, that mind, that wholeness, that experience, that vision is what he was saying. The division between the conscious and the unconscious, the division between the soul and the spirit, um, it's never complete, it's never absolute. It's, it's experiential. Um, rather than absolute, um, the, the division between the, the conscious and the unconscious is leaky. There's always a certain amount of leakage that occurs. Um, you know, you, you hear about this with Freudian slips and all kinds of things. Um, you cannot completely keep the unconscious down. Is, there is some minor connection, and it is really our, our purpose in life, I believe, to 
to increase that connection, to, re to reunify right. the two halves of the mind. Hey, one of the best ways uh, is to do some exploration, whether you do that through prayer or meditation. Personal experience is the way uh, in, in my view. And uh, it's great to read and to, you know, hear stories about other people uh, having profound spiritual or religious experiences. But I think the most important thing is for you to have the experiences yourself, because that way you go from believing into knowing, having a direct personal experience of the divine, which is the kind of thing that saints in both Christianity and uh, yogis and Zen will speak about. Any experience you have, you have only because you have a certain pattern of brainwaves. And if you don't have those pattern of brainwaves, you're not going to have those experiences. If you can learn to have those patterns, then you can have those experiences.